So I want to talk today a little bit about influences, uh, both people who directly influence our photography, but also the ways in which people influence us, maybe perhaps more broadly. You know, someone asked me when I was a teenager, do you have any childhood heroes? And I said, no, I don't, I don't think so. And yet, if you look at all the places in the world that Tintin's been, and all the places in the world that I've been, there's a lot of crossover. Another really good example, and maybe more important, is actually my grandparents. When I was growing up, uh, they always had art around the house, which really was inspiring and really trained my eye to a certain degree. And about a decade ago, 12 years ago, something like that, my grandfather bought me my first professional grade DSLR. And it was that camera that allowed me to get into journalism uh, and is the reason that I have a lot of the career that I have today. So there's these ways in which people around us are, are shaping us and uh, changing the path that we're on. And not only is it important to recognize that, but I think also really try to uh, embody it or, or make the most of it. Okay, so I'm done breakfast and I realized two things. First, that maybe I should have taken some shots of me eating. And second, that maybe I was being a little bit vague. And what I mean by embodying uh, you know, what people, the, the, the inspiration that they give you is that I think we, you should be actively thinking about the lessons that you learn and giving credit, which is something that I wanna do right now, but maybe in a second. Thank you. Okay, we back. And we have this package, but uh, gonna deal with that a little bit later. First, I wanna get back to what I was saying, which was about how I think a really important part of being inspired by people is one, holding the lessons that they teach you present in your mind, and two, giving people credit. And so I'm gonna mention a couple of people who have really inspired me and, and have changed my life and talk a little bit about how they did that. So the first one is a woman named Janet Rogers. She's a poet, she's a radio broadcaster. Uh, I met her here in Victoria years and years ago and we didn't know each other for that long, but we went on this trip to the Kamloopa powwow and it was a really life-changing experience for me because the things that she talked to me about uh, and her friend Vanessa talked to me about uh, really changed my perspective on what I was doing with my journalism, who it was serving, and how the stories that we gather from people, uh, who benefits from those stories going out. And that was something that became, uh, ha became really major in my life and has been a large part of how my work has, has gone forward. And in a similar vein, the second person that I want to mention is uh, my former colleague, Khawisa Luktu. Uh, I worked with him for five years in Nunavut, and he was such a fantastic journalist and cared so much about properly informing people. He was fearless uh, and thoughtful and empathetic, and he also wasn't afraid to disagree and to argue. And I really enjoyed going in every day and working with him. When I think about the positive impact that we can have in the world, I think a lot about him. But let's get back to photography. Who has inspired me within sort of the photo realm? I have two names that I'm gonna give you. The first one, I never met him, I wish I did, uh, Josef Kirsch. What a fantastic portrait photographer. His photos were so powerful and they taught me two things. The first one was shapes because when I realized that he was using shapes, triangles and circles to draw the eye in and, and capture them, it, it was something that blew my mind. And it really changed how I started seeing the world. I started seeing shapes everywhere. And the second thing that he did was that he talked about how his portraits of all these really famous people, iconic photos. You know, when you think of some people like Ernest Hemingway, you're probably thinking of a Josef Kirsch photo. What he said about his, his portraiture was that he wasn't trying to capture the people for who they were. He was trying to capture the essence of their persona. That's what he was trying to do in those portraits. And I think clearly was incredibly successful. And I thought that that was a really interesting take on it and, and, and showed me something about photography in terms of that it's not always about just the representation of what's in front of you, but can also be part of these much larger arcs, these epic sort of identities. 
The last person I'm gonna talk about uh, is a photographer I did get to meet. His name's Ashley Gilbertson. He's based out of New York. And he told me two things that really stuck with me. And the first one was I was taking all my pictures in New York uh, in black and white. And he challenged me. He said, if you can't explain to me why this photo should or needs to be in black and white, then it should be in color. Sometimes we use black and white as a crutch, and I definitely was doing that, and that has carried through all the way since then. And the second thing that Ashley uh, said to me, it's very easy to take photos of people in disadvantaged situations, which is not to say that you shouldn't do it, but that it's very easy to do that. And so we have to challenge ourselves as, as photographers and as journalists to push beyond that and, and to take pictures of people in situations uh, who have power and who um, perhaps don't have their photo taken as much. And that's been something I've, I've thought about a lot. I uh, thought about it in the context of my work and, and have tried to, tried to do and, and tried to make sure that I'm keeping present in my mind. And actually, it links back to Janet when, when she was talking about who, who benefits from the stories that we tell. So those are some people who really inspired me, some lessons that they taught me that uh, have really changed my life and I keep with me all the time. Uh, and now we're gonna get into this box. Okay, so I've been waiting for a couple days for this box to come. And in it uh, is something very special. I mentioned earlier that my grandfather had bought me uh, my first uh, professional grade DSLR, uh, and that had really changed my life. And my grandfather died five years ago. My grandmother's still alive, uh, but she just recently decided that she wanted to uh, give uh, all her grandkids their inheritance uh, now. And so with that inheritance, um, I purchased this, a Leica Q2, uh, and I'm gonna open now. Oh, hello. This box is crazy. So it opens up like origami almost. And uh, take a look inside. Leica. So yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, it's my new camera. It's a little bit of a legacy piece uh, from my grandparents. Um, and I'm really excited to take pictures with it and show them to you.